Yes, when you, I mean, when you're talking about bomb shelters and people feel safe in a bomb shelter, but to be in this situation, uh, I mean, Sean, have you, have you had to sp speak to family and friends that yeah. are in a similar situation? Um, yeah, I have. Um, like, I, like I was saying, um, some of my family had to, to hunker down um, in the, the basement of their apartment. Um, we've, we've kept our, our lines of communication open. Um, I haven't heard from um, that side of the family um, since yesterday morning, I believe. Um, although my mum, obviously, in uh, the UK, is keeping in touch with them. So. How's she? How's your mum feeling? Oh, um, she is, she's, she's taking this very, very difficultly. Um, it's, it's a really hard thing for her, um, for, for think, all of her family. I think what Anna mentioned there is really important as well. It, Ukrainians have been getting ready for this for eight That's years. Right. Over 14,000 people have already died. Reports of 50 people um, having been killed this morning, unconfirmed, I think, uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, today, and, and you've got such personal connections with the place, so you're thinking about your family. When you hear about talks taking place in Belarus between Ukraine and Russia, is that something hopeful for you? Because we know that that Putin just wanted to put in a puppet government, and he thought this would be over by now. This, that, that's true. I think that, that well, I believe that that's the case. That Putin was wanting to put in his, his own puppet government. Yeah. Um, do I have hope from the negotiations? Of course, you've got to have some kind of hope. Um, it's difficult to have hope because I don't think we can trust anything that um, the Russian regime says. Um, you know, uh, we we had the, the ambassador for Ireland from Russia um, on RT last week. Saying, yes, Philip Tuff, sorry, I forgot his name. Um, McCullough, but he, yeah. you know, uh, he, was, he was shown to have been a liar before. And, you know, you've just got the hope that, that, that negotiations can come up with a peaceful process. That would be, that would be a, a fantastic outcome. Um, yeah. uh, can we, uh, Anna, can I ask you as well, you were at the protest outside the Russian embassy, incredible scenes, and the support that was down there. What was that like? I'm sure it was very emotional for you. Well, we had four solid days of uh, protests and petitioning, four solid days in Thursday. Um, you know, we've been at O'Connell Street, we've been at Ambassadors, we've been at Russian Embassy, we've been at Linster Street. Uh, overwhelming support, we feel support, we feel understanding um, of what this war is about. This, this war essentially is as serious as you know, World War II, if you think about the beginning of it. So there is an aggression, there is a land captured, there is an, a bit of a pause, then there is a next land captured, then there is a bit of a pause. Each time the population and land is captured, they are added to this war machine. They are added to this war machine. So you can see Belarusia and the Donetsk region and Crimea were used to attack the rest of Ukraine. Should Ukraine fall, this will be added to the war machine and used against next country in Europe. There is no stopping of that except actually stopping Putin. And I think what, what you said there, Anna, it really does hit home. But not only that, the fact that you are mobilising here in Ireland to help with supplies in Ukraine. Indeed, the Ukrainian and Polish community around Ireland are very much mobilising to try to get things on the ground. There's a list of things yeah. um, all over the internet that you can find that are needed. We mentioned earlier on batteries, flashlights, medical supplies are very much needed. And our thoughts um, are, are with you all. Um, Anna, Koloskova, I know that you're chatting to your family and your friends in Ukraine. Our thoughts are with you. And Sean Pollock from the Irish Independent.